let's talk about our crown. Our crown energy center, some of you may know them as a chakra or chakra. This area usually kind of hovers above the head. I like to frame as the gate of divinity to the body. And the gate of divinity is the access point to higher self or divine, God, universe, what, whatever you subscribe to as being greater than or overall or just part of. And this access point up here usually is in a position where it can open and close as we go through our days. They flex, they're not static. They change over time. In my observations doing subtle body readings for over 15 years, I've noticed that as times get tough or hard, they actually open up more as though we're trying to rely on direction or guidance from the things that are greater than us. Or if we tend to be really kind of like into the present and trying to really focus on certain things, sometimes they close and take some of that extra chatter out of the the soul of the body. If you ever feel like you're having a really hard time connecting with your divinities or your higher self or even uh, trying to reach out and contact new spiritual entities to work with and you're just struggling with that, a visualization or a meditation that I would recommend is to think about that opening and closing almost like a flower. When you do that, that flexing ability back and forth will give you a little bit more control to help give you a little bit more conscious awareness on opening and closing that gateway. I hope this helps, and if you're trying to contact higher power, divinity, divine, all that wonderful stuff, I wish you the best of luck with that. And just remember that you do have more control over your soul and your subtle body than you can ever imagine. Today we're going to end up talking about our third eye. Let's get into it. Our third eye is part of the seat of perception within the body. Generally, this is the area which we indicate that we can sense or see psychically. In my studies of psychic anatomy, it definitely is a place of interest as it is between our throat and our crown. It interprets both of these. It ends up being able to see both sides, both in the spiritual and in the physical. It also ties directly into the throat which helps us to manifest. Our psychic perception is unique to each individual, and it's one of the areas of study that I enjoy most because it's so unique to each individual. No two people are going to sense exactly the same way psychically, and that's why we have many different words describe the types of ways that people engage with and pick up psychic information. You may have heard of one or all of these clairs, there's a bunch of them and each one is tied to one of our physical senses and in some instances even extrasensory stuff that is not quite a physical sense but is still something that we can qualify as a sense. Psychic perception is also interesting because of how it meshes with our mind and this is where we get into an interesting overlap between neuroscience, psychology, and psychic perception. Now the more study you do within the space of psychic perception the more likely you're going to come across uh, it is how our mind interprets language. It's why one of the classes that I like to teach the most is psychic language development. When we're born into this world currently we do not have a language for psychic senses. We do not have an empathic language to describe feelings as well or in depth as we experience them. Thus, our mind tries to associate as closely as it can to a sense that makes the most sense for the information that it is picking up. What this generally creates are individuals who typically interpret things as symbol, and it's why the language of dreams ends up being something that overlaps with psychic language. It also means that folks, when they're trying to describe what they're picking up in a psychic manner, typically speak almost in a metaphorical way. That said, you can develop your psychic language and figure out what it is and how you sense so that you can begin to build a bridge of language between your natural language that you speak every day, such as English, to what you're actively picking up and become more and more accurate as you practice. It's one of the reasons why I deeply love teaching this because it empowers individuals to be able to acknowledge their intuition and to acknowledge what they're picking up in their psychic senses and give voice to it in a way that is successfully communicative to those around them. And that's really empowering and I like that. What's so important about the throat energy center? My name is Abri with Aether Body and I have been reading people's auras and subtle bodies now for over 15 years. And I have a little bit to say about our throat energy center, so let's get into that. The throat energy center kind of sits right between like our mouth and throat area and actually includes your ears and lower jaw. This whole area is pivotal for communication. And if you're a magical practitioner, this area is also pivotal for manifestation. Our throat sits between the junction of our third eye, so our seat of perception, and our heart, the seat of empathy. 
So this little energy center right here can put in a lot of work to speak both from the mind and from the heart. Oftentimes blockages that do occur in this particular place usually come in the form of feeling like your voice isn't being heard or feeling that you can't speak loud enough or that people don't understand you. Blocks in this area can also be subject to overwhelm of emotions when there's too much energy coming up from this direction and it sort of gets caught here or there's too much going on up here and as it's coming down it gets mangled up here. Good communicators rely on a nice transit of both energies through this space and it allows them to speak out their energy. So regardless of what religion or practice you're part of, when you pray or when you put things out into the universe or however, and you do it with your voice actually speaking it, you engage and activate this energy center. Individuals who really utilize this energy center, so think of a singer for instance, can really put in a lot of that power of emotion behind it. So they have a stronger connection between their heart and their throat. And likewise, somebody who's an educator for instance, may be tying more from the mind out of the mouth. And I've done ample readings when individuals have issues possibly with one, the head or the heart and how they communicate with that. And again, the best communicators use both and engage it through the throat. So what can you do if you're having blockages in this particular area? As cheesy as it sounds, practicing speaking is important. And what I mean by that is in the safety of your own home or in a safe place, verbalize out loud and practice with yourself speaking your energy into the world. Say you're having a hard time communicating with somebody in your car, you can just run through that conversation, speak it out loud and you'll be able to hear how your energy is coming out. Likewise, if you're having a hard time articulating a complex thought, we might consider doing some practice in the same way, trying to describe that complex thought in different ways that engage our throat in a different manner. You can also do work where you take energy from the chest up and out, or take energy from the head and out. And feel free to use your fingers and actually touch your body in order to sort of engage and help reinforce the energy work that you're doing by clearing this space or by clearing this space. Once you understand the mechanism of how your throat energy center is working, now you get to play with it. You can put a lot of command in your voice. You can put a lot of power into your voice. And some people grow up not being able to establish what their voice sounds like. And when I use voice, I use it with a capital V because it's important. It's your impact on the world around you. It's how you manifest. It's how you put the energy into the fabric of reality. I really think the throat is an underappreciated energy center just because a lot of people think of it as a transit of communication and it is and it's a powerful part of our existence and I think one that we can utilize and play with more. There's also a ton of other quirks with our throat energy center and that could be something we talk about another time but for now I hope that's a little bit of a quick overview and something to give you a little bit to think about when it comes to speaking with power in your voice. Until next time, bye!